Hello everybody and welcome to IR Photo Tours where today we're going to be talking about something very exciting after this. <laughs> Can I ask everyone, before we start, can I ask everyone to please subscribe down below, support this channel. Now, it is very exciting news today, especially for somebody like myself. So, me being a photographer, doing, um, doing nightscape photography, doing astro photography, doing uh, landscape, landscape and astro, they kind of just go together so well. Um, but for me, I've always wanted and needed uh, a good drop-in filter for my night photography. This is what we're seeing. So Breakthrough Photography launches uh, the Breakthrough R drop-in filters for the Canon EOS R system. What does this mean? Well, and who are who are Breakthrough um, Breakthrough filters? I don't know. They are a UK company. I now I'm, I'm going to delve into this a little bit deeper in a little while. So we'll come back to this, but. Um, Basically, it's, it's very exciting for me as an astrophotographer because they're doing some um, some night photography uh, filters. So hopefully, it it will be um, like light pollution filters. I would assume that's what they're doing, and they they have basically. Uh, we'll, we'll go through. It. We'll read this because it's very interesting. So Breakthrough Filters recently unveiled a new filter system called Breakthrough R. Now the R being Canon R system, no doubt, designed specifically for the Canon EOS R system. There you go. Uh, every filter type manufactured by Breakthrough Filters is now available in the R size options, uh, specifically for the Breakthrough R system, including all new filters such as variable NDs and black and white polarizers. These filters work with Canon's drop-in filter mount adapter the EF EOS R. So that is fantastic news. Now I've been saying this to friends and I don't know why I don't do this on YouTube because it makes me look a bit of a plonker when I actually state that I've said about this ages ago, why don't Canon do some filters for night photography? They're doing the drop-in ND, the polarizer, but that's it. Somebody now has come up with that solution. I'm pleased to say, and um, yeah, I was, I was mad. I was talking about this not not that long ago, um, but there you go. It's happening. Lovely old job. I'm so excited. So anyway, the Breakthrough R drop-in filters feature a rugged weather-sealed construction designed to withstand the elements with dust and water resistance. Well, that sounds really good as well, because at the end of the day, I use drop-in filters on the front. So, um, you know, basically on a, on a, a Lee filter system, so the big square filters, and you put them in the front. Now they can get residue on them, they can get weather on them, they can get uh, sand on them, um, and you can scratch them. Um, so this option seems quite a good option at the moment. Um, it looks promising. So, and uh, and it's all for the R's, so that'd be the R, the R5 and the R6, okay? And it'd be for that uh, Canon drop-in filter mount adapter, which is the EF EOSR. Uh, and basically, the color, each filter is color coded, so that, that's good in itself as well, so you can pick it out of the bag and know exactly what one it is. Um, Breakthrough R filters are easily stored in all in, uh, easily stored in an all new compact travel friendly case that fits up to five filters. Uh, only five. Okay, they might develop a bit more than that. Anyway, filter system. There you go. That's that's the uh, adapter there. Uh, the new Breakthrough R drop in filter system has a wide range of twenty seven filters to choose from. 27 filters, wow. So what I wanna know is how much these are gonna cost and how good they are. Um, 
they reckon the performance is critical to pros. So, okay, sounds good. Whether they're shooting detailed landscape images or 8K video. Uh, basically, it's all there, all the information. Um, the the four X4 CPL is one of the highest rated and best selling polarizers in the USA with an unrivaled light transmission of 50.24% when compared to the industry leading filters manufacturers of both circular and dropping polarizers the times 4 CPL is followed by the Canon drop-in CPL at 43.26% so that's quite a difference there between the two. The result of higher light transmission is faster shutter speed. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Which can translate into sharper still images and the ability to use a lower ISO when shooting video. Okay, that makes sense as well. The, four, the Times 4 CPL um, also has the flattest visible transmission curve, yielding the most color neutral performance. That sounds pretty good as well. Um, so that sounds to me like a really good filter to have um, for video or your landscape photography. So moving on, um, they've got 27 of these filters. That's pretty damn amazing. So who are they? Who are these guys? And there are a lot of filters there. NDs, um, and, and, the, and the thing is, they've also got, let, let's go back a little bit here. Um, they'll be doing night ones as well. So uh, Canon, Canon d does not currently offer solid ND drop-in filters. However, the X4 ND performance exceeds industry leading manufacturers such as Sing Ray and B, B plus W, B and W, okay? And Lee, and Lee, wow. The X4 ND has the most neutral color transmission throughout the visible range and well into infrared. Well, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm quite impressed. This is the bit that I'm really impressed with. Okay, so we'll go for it. Breakthrough filters is announced and a number of other breakthrough R filters available for the pre-order, including the dark CPLs in three, six or 10 stop densities. The night sky filter eliminates artificial light pollution between 570 and 610 nanometers of the visible light spectrum and the infrared filters cuts visible light up to 720 nanometers so that's pretty damn good as well and what that means is it's going to cut out your street lights i've always wanted and, and needed a filter for night photography that i can cut out the street light pollution because i don't always want to go out 20 30 minutes out into the darkness um, and some people just can't do that anyway um, and they live in cities and yet they, they want to view that night sky. Couple that, that filter, that night filter, couple that with the 800 millimeter Canon lens, which is what, 970 pounds, something like that, getting on for a grand nearly. Couple that with that lens and a two times converter on that and your um, ND drop-in filter um, adapter, what have you got? You, you basically got a, well, you've got a telescope really, haven't you? You've got a telescope, that's what you've got. That's, that's incredible. Um, now, I have recently watched, and I'm gonna say this actually to uh, uh, for Simon. I watched Simon at Ordinary Filmmakers video uh, today, and that inspired me a little bit to, um, to, to get this lens. I knew this lens was gonna be good. The 800 mil lens, I knew it was gonna be pretty good. Now he's just done a video on, and uh, really to uphold, uphold what I thought it would be like. Um, the F11 on it, kinda, I did kinda think that could be an issue, but actually, you know, on his video, it shows it isn't really a, an issue at all. Um, but he, is, he hasn't got the two times on it yet. So that could lead it up to F22. Now F22, 
What's the performance going to be like? What's the, is it going to be crisp? Is it going to be sharp? We don't know yet. Um, but I am really, really, really tempted. I will be getting that lens. I will be getting the 800mm lens. I'm, I'm sure of it. And I shall put that onto the R and see how it performs on the R. And I shall also, because at the end of the day, the R's got 30, 30 megapixels, so it's not far off the R5. And um, when you look at it that way, there's not a lot in it. Um, yes, you got inbuilt uh, IBIS on the R5, but when you're shooting um, stars and astrophotography, you are on a tripod. So in actual fact, if you have that IBIS on and you have IS on whilst you're on a tripod, it, it can actually affect your image because it will fight against the, uh, the, the, the fact that there is no movement. So in, in other words, it's going to generate movement in, in the IBIS and the um, IS. So it's not worth having that on when you're doing astrophotography and long exposures. Um, so personally, I'll be turning that off. Saying that, I don't know whether the R5 has got uh, a system where it recognises that the, the camera is on a tripod. I know that some can Canon lenses do recognise this fact and uh, it turns the IS off, which is quite cool. Um, and it's an automatic thing. So don't know whether that's the same with IBIS. I have no idea. It's well worth, well worth for mention that. And if somebody knows, let me know down below again, because that, uh, that is well worth mentioning. Anyway, moving on. So just one more thing to add really to, to my conversation is we did talk briefly at the start about this lovely little beastie here, right? That is a mood light and um, it is an amazing piece of kit. Now I'm going to talk about that on my next video. I'm not going to ramble on today about it, but that is going to be awesome. And I'll show you also the setup that I have here in my studio and I'll let you know how we get on with that. See you soon. Thank you very much for uh, watching guys. Thank you very much for subscribing and liking. Love you all boys and girls. Bye for now.